I'm Waylon. And I'm Allie. Welcome back to the Entrepreneurs Podcast, the podcast for and by female entrepreneurs, hosted by the Entrepreneurs Network. Each week, we bring you stories of female entrepreneurs around the world as we kickstart our own entrepreneurial journeys together. Today, we are delighted to have Anissa, the founder of Music 4M, who's also a singer-songwriter, figure skater, and Miss Michigan Teen USA. As a student, Anissa discusses her beliefs on failure and stepping outside her comfort zone. Join us as we talk with Anissa about her journey from competing in pageants to writing her own music and being a student entrepreneur. Hello and welcome back to the podcast. We are so excited to have you, Anissa. Hi, thank you so much for having me. I'm very excited to be here. So Anissa, we would love, love, love to ask you when you're waking up in the morning, what is the first thing that pops into your mind? What are you most excited about when you wake up? There's so much stuff that pops into my mind and I try (laughs) to ease that amount of stress and pressure almost by making a to-do list the night before. And I have a planner Mm -hmm. next day. I actually, it sits on my bed when I sleep and it's hourly. And I go through all the things I haven't gotten done that I need to get done that I keep pushing back. And I put on that planner and try to attack that the first thing in the morning. So mainly like I wake up and I'm like, okay, it used to be, I'd go downstairs and eat breakfast, but now it's like, okay, got to start my first homework assignment or something like that. (laughs) I feel that. I feel like I like roll out of bed and I'm like, writing some or like some sort of essay I need to complete. Yeah. (laughs) So for our audience who don't know you so well, could you give us a short, sweet little bio of yourself and your entrepreneurial journey? So if you don't know, my name is Anissa Shake. I grew up figure skating and my true passion is in music. I've been playing guitar for almost 11 years now. So I started when I was eight. So my guitar is my best friend. It goes everywhere with me, my travel buddy. I have a lot of songs coming out soon and I'm really excited for that. But I'm a freshman at University of Michigan right now. And I was supposed to go to NYU, but um, COVID blocked that from happening. And so, yeah, that's a little bit about me. Amazing. So when we first met, I connected with you through NYU, I wanted you to do an event on a live vibe, which you so kindly did, a Q&A about it, what it means to be, um, for those who don't know, uh, Miss Teen Michigan USA. So, and I was super fascinated about that. So first of all, can you just give us a little bio what that means for those who have no idea who aren't from the US and know about the whole pageant world, what does that mean? And then have a little couple of follow-up questions about how you were able to use that platform to help expand into music, expanding to media and beyond. Of course. So. Miss Michigan Teen USA is a pageant under the Miss Universe organization, which is worldwide. And in fact, it's actually next month. I'm very excited. But um, the pageant taught me a lot in the sense how to combine myself in different characteristics about myself, such as public speaking with um, how I present myself in different formats, whether it's at an event for a charity fundraiser or whether it's at a singing event where I have to sing. And so I had to learn how to become a chameleon in the sense that I kind of cater to the audience I'm in with my mannerisms and how I act and respond to others. And that's the beautiful thing about doing pageants here in the U.S. It's very prominent. And um, it was my first pageant ever, actually. I signed up three weeks before, which I'm sure, Allie, you know that. I I talked about that last time. And it was a great experience. And fun fact, i have the longest Miss Michigan Teen USA probably ever in history because of COVID. It delayed my year. So perks (laughs) perks <laughs> but um yeah that's a little bit about the pageant it's a it's a really nice organization how did you get involved with the pageant world like what drove you to apply like three weeks before it happened yeah my my very close friend in high school her name is Shahar Azad long name but a great person <laughs> And she owned the dress store in my local town. And she was also on the forensics, which is public speaking, speech and debate team Mm -hmm. in my high school. And um, she said, Anissa, you know, you figure skated. So you you play guitar, you do some modeling stuff. You like to be in front of people in an audience and you have that performance factor about you. And you do the public speaking at school. You should try it. She had done pageants her entire life. And she said, come look at dresses, you know, try it. I think you should do it. So she connected me with her old coach, which is funny story. My sister competed in a pageant. I mean, I'd say 10 years ago. And her coach was the girl that was the lady that my friend connected me with. So So she already knew who I was, but it was very funny because I called her. I said, her name, the coach was Shannon. I said, Shannon, hey, can you coach me? My name is Anissa. I'm at this high school. I want to do the pageant, but it's a month away. Will you please help me? 
she's like, wait, are you baby shake? Cause my last name's shake. I oh taught your God. older sister and prepped her 10 years ago for a pageant. And fun fact, the condo I was living in when I moved from Kentucky to Michigan for figure skating training 10 years ago as well was her old condo. That's that was like very crazy. <laughs> yeah. So then it was kind of like full circle and meant to be. And I worked with her, I'd say like four times before. And uh, I went and had some good luck at the pageant and won. Amazing. Um, and since your pageant, you've been able to use this platform to kind of pursue your creative side so much more in the more creative show music entrepreneurial entrepreneurial sense. You didn't have a big record label or anything backing up. I remember talking to you a year ago, you have this incredible inspirational like vibe and energy that has such an ambitious goals to create this and the music. And I really, really, really admire your spirit. So I really want to hear firstly about how you were able to continue to inspire yourself and motivate yourself to create music and to build upon the opportunities you have reaching out, but also the opportunities that you feel that this pageant gave you to expand yourself as an entrepreneur and help you expand into other fields you might not have otherwise explored. So yes, a lot of people see me as Miss Michigan Teen USA, and I'm actually trying to get away from that because it has hindered in a sense, like my other career endeavors in the sense mm -hmm. that it's taken certain acting roles away from me because I've been seen only as a beauty queen, oh. when it's far more than that, in the sense that when you're beautiful you can also have brains and so beauty is very subjective and people think oh she's a pageant girl she must not be very intellectual you could say in a sense I'm not trying to say like I'm you know what I mean but she's very, um, no, she's yeah. very intellectual she's very, <laughs> very intellectual thank you but um as far as music and motivating myself I had actually attended and done so much with music prior to the pageant that I feel that the pageant actually put on pause because I had to do so much work with mm -hmm. charities, which I loved. Oh my goodness. That pause in my music was a little detrimental and it was hard to gain the momentum back again. And I'm still trying to, but at the same time, I needed that pause because it taught me how to present myself in different manners, like I previously mentioned, which in the future in my music career will, will be very beneficial that I learned how to do that. And the small things as, oh no, what looks good on myself for this event? You know, what dress looks mm -hmm. good? I, I know this may sound very materialistic and stuff, but it's true, you know, in that industry, in the music industry, it's entertaining and people are always picking apart everything about you. So if I have that skill now, I'll be able to take that into the music and in, in my music in the future. And so staying motivated every day is really just seeing my goals. Every day I see like, oh, I want to, I want to have a Grammy. I want to do this. I don't feel like I'll get that unless I work towards it, just like anything in life. And also it's mainly my love for it. I love, it's like a stress relief for me. I am very busy juggling all the pageant, school, um, family responsibilities and music, but Having my music, it's like a stress relief for me, which I actually founded a nonprofit, Music for Miracle, which stands like an acronym that says music inspires, reaches, accepts, captures, and loves equally, which Ali knows about because I spoke about last year. But um, it, it means like basically it's stress relief music and music therapy. There's another thing that keeps me motivated. My sister, my older sister, when I was a figure skater, when I was younger, she told me there's never a minute or a second you'll get back in life. So like, think wow. about it a minute ago, you'll never get that same minute, that same day, that same month back or week back in your life. How can you make that memorable and how can you use that time to your advantage? So like when I wake up in the day, I don't just walk throughout the day, walk around my house like, oh, looking for things to do. Like I have a plan. I let's sit down. Let me just put the guitar in my hand because once it's in my lap and it's in my hands, I'll know what to do. Like I'll, I'll like start practicing and I'll have a good time. And at the end of the day, if nothing comes from my music, at least I enjoyed every step of the process of it. I love that so much. You are such a queen. So inspirational. <laughs> um, Thank you. Like, you and I are just like, oh, this is fantastic. And no, that's you guys. From, that's you guys. <laughs> all, I may point out, like, we all come from such different backgrounds and different worlds. Like, yeah. I, my parents are both born and brought up in Canada. They moved to Hong Kong in 1994. I lived in Hong Kong my entire life as, like, Canadian Jewish living in Hong Kong now I'm in Shanghai Waylon you can share your background like I just want to show for the audience like how yeah no, for sure our but we're it's all amazing. like it's amazing yeah no for sure 
Um, yeah, like I'm originally from Singapore, but I lived in like Hong Kong and the Netherlands for a really long time. So oh, the Netherlands. Of, Where in the Netherlands? Um, I lived in Den Haag and Eindhoven, um, which are like, yeah, it's kind of like I know really the small Hague. towns. Is mm-hmm. it the Hog? Yeah, the Hog. Mm-hmm. Is that where you lived? Mm-hmm. Oh, I visited there one time a year ago. It was really yeah. beautiful. Yeah. yeah, I got some chocolate. <laughs> oh. Love that. <laughs> but yeah, um, I think it's so cool that like even though we come from some diverse backgrounds, like I feel like I resonate a lot with like like a lot of the experiences that you have too. Like the fact that you can like juggle like music and like school and like figure skating and being like Miss Teen USA, like to a small extent, like, I feel like I can, like, relate to that, just, like, juggling things in my life. Do you have any advice for our audience of, like, how you do it all, like, within your 24 hours? I'm getting to the point where it's actually, I'm not perfect. It's hard to do it all, you know what I mean? Where in high school, it was, you guys know, the transition from, I guess you could say, secondary school to a university is difficult in the sense that you study one way in high school, school or secondary school and you're learning and then all of a sudden it's like the tests are timed differently a different format and stuff like that you have to put a certain effort into school to succeed and with me it's like I know I'm capable of doing excellent in school and I know I'm capable of doing really good in music but if I do both and like everything juggle everything it, it's like the jack of all trades, master of none. So right now I'm actually at the point where I might have to take a um, gap year from school next year because music will get so intense. And for me, I don't want to do that, but I have to remind myself that school comes, I, I can do that in 10 years. My mom went to college when she was 36 after having all of her five kids. And now yeah. she's a doctorate. She has a doctorate degree. Okay, queen, queen's giving birth to queens. Yeah. <laughs> Crazy, I love that. So like, I know like for me, I got into a great school, NYU, University of Miami, University of Michigan, really good schools, but it is, it's sort of an ego that I don't want to like not continue school for right now because of music, but that's where my true passion and passion is in. And there's like a timeline for that. So sorry, I digress a lot. I got to no, work on that. <laughs> and so right now I'm still staying in school. I'm finishing this semester. And then in the summer, I'm going to see where my music is and see if I have to take a year off to do touring and stuff. But yeah, to sure. answer your question, my advice would be for others. Can you repeat the question? <laughs> yeah, you're totally fine. No, I actually want to ask you, like, I feel like a lot of students have to juggle, like they they have a problem or like they have a startup or a true passion. And like, everyone always says like, you have to like finish school first, like, and then like when you're 22, start your job. And then like later on, like when you retire, well, okay. you'll have time for passions. And so- although that's like true, and like, that's like definitely a good path. Like, I think a lot of students struggle with like whether or not they should take a gap year. Like, what has your kind of like reasonings been behind that? For Well, it is very difficult because school is a normality in the society we live in now yeah. and just the world we live in now. It is pretty standard, especially here in the U.S., Canada and certain other places in the world. Graduate secondary school or high school and you go to college, you get that degree, then you use that to go to either grad school or have a job. Mm-hmm. Or you work, you open up a business, you do that stuff and you don't go to college. But the thing is, why do we, why do people go to college? People go to college so that they can gain the necessary skill set to go and propel themselves to the next point in their life and what they want to do. If you want to be a musician, unless you're studying music and you want to teach music, what really is school for? you can take singing lessons instead of having to pay a high tuition and having to take other classes that don't help your skill set. Taylor Swift has never gone to college, but if she had gone to college, would people Google, oh my goodness, what school did Taylor Swift go to? (laughs) Or would they Google how many Grammys has Taylor Swift had? Stuff like that. So my advice would be on kind of just how to juggle it all and advice on where to spend your time and effort spend your time and effort on what you love what makes you feel the happiest and what you think about all the time for me I think about music I mean 24 7 it is like okay what do I need to accomplish today with music what song do I want to learn next oh how did would this sound on the guitar and if for example if it's like business oh what if I created this product 
how would that affect the world in this sense? You know, who would buy that? Take a leap of faith, get outside of your comfort zone because that's where you grow the most. Now I do have to say, someone told me recently, so there's three things that you want, time, Mm -hmm. money, and your knowledge. So let's say you want money and you have knowledge and you have time. Use those two things to help you get wealth. Now let's say you have wealth and you have knowledge. You got to clear up some of your time or use that so you can have freedom with your time. You have time and you have wealth. Go to school. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. My dad used to say something similar. He was like, there's like three circles. There's like what you love to do, what makes money and like what you're good at. And like your goal is to try to find like the sweet spot in the middle where you can do something you love, like, or like prioritize between those three circles. And yeah, like that's such a nice equation to live by for sure. It's hard though to realize because I feel like some people love something, but they just may not be good at it. You know, on it, I've been there. I may love something, but I may just not be good at it. Bio is not my thing. (laughs) No, no, no. Honestly, I don't even love bio. I'm decent at it, but I don't like it. Mm -hmm. So that's that's not for me because I don't like it, you know? (laughs) But um, yeah, so I agree with that. No, may I just say you sound so wise and almost like stoic with this, because I think for someone who, you know, has so much that they've done in the past year and been able to grow so much personally, it's really remarkable that you're able to like look back, but also look forward in that, you know, like, oh yeah, sure. I've done this, but I'm also so excited about what's to come in the future. And I remember listening to a podcast pretty recently um, on the note about time and like buying time sort of thing. The idea is to be as young as possible for as old as you can. And something like that, there's a quote like that, but pretty much what it means is like the moment you get old is when you start to think more about the past and the future. Like you can think of like our grandparents, like in the most like stereotypical sense. Oh, when I was younger, yada, yada, yada. But like, if you're always looking forward to the future about things you can learn, things you want to accomplish, things you want to do, you're never going to be old. You're always going to be forward thinking about like the future, like that childhood spirit that I think all of us exhibit that like we're excited about waking up in the morning, what we can do, how we can excite ourselves, have fun, learn that sort of thing. Um, so I really, really like that. And the other point I want to make was just in terms of COVID and like being able to adapt as an entrepreneur in terms of college, picking what's right for you, being an entrepreneur and having that spirit that you can do creative things, but also adapt is super important because if you have this like fixed mindset, that's like, okay I need to do this four path because that's what I've been told and externally changed it's not going to impact me that's unhelpful for you as a person to grow in the ever-changing environment that is stimulus and things like that but also for yourself internally because you don't know the opportunities that you could be missing by not diverging from this like traditional path especially with like as your music continues to grow which we definitely want to talk about more but also with COVID like there are opportunities that have been able to just accelerate in so many ways. And if you didn't digress from what the path that you thought always had to be on, then you, it would have never happened. Um, exactly. So yeah, I just wanted to make that point. Um, yeah, but just kind of going back to music, can you talk to us about some excitement that's going on there, but also something that you've learned about yourself through your music? As a person, as an, a musician, I would really, really love to hear about that because music is obviously something that's very emotional driven and it comes yes. from so I'd love to hear about like what you've discovered about yourself through your music well I honestly it's funny because I discover something new all the time about myself with my music in the sense that how my work ethic is things I need to improve on things that I'm good at and so um it's funny that you're asking me that because now I'm actually having to think about and internalize that question a little bit so I'm going to ask myself what have I learned about me and my music I've learned that it's with my goals in the industry is to be a public figure, take my music public. So like be on the radio and certain things like that, like be a musician, but not just like a musician in my local town or in my bedroom. That's what I love to do. I just love the instrument and singing so much and creating and learning. I love to learn different and keep growing in my music um, and advancing in how I play the guitar or like vocals. And where my goals, I can't just do that. I have to learn the marketing side of the music. So I've learned that my downside is, it's not a downside, it's just I've had to learn that it's not always about doing it because you love it. It's doing what you have to do in, the, in, in it with the music 
to get it to the point where it will be public. For example, certain songs that I love to sing are the songs that I would never release because they're not um, marketable. Mm -hmm. So I don't really know if that answered your question 100%, but basically it's like I have to take a step back from the emotional side of the music and think about the business side of it. And so it's like I have to disconnect myself a little bit. And so that's something I've learned I've had a hard time doing because of how much I actually love the music part of it. And that's why I've continued it for so long. And that's why I keep going. So I have to find for myself a good balance of moderation between the actual business and just keeping my love for it. Like kind of being able to mesh them, but not like over, like it's complicated. Yeah. I don't know if that answered it. Sorry. Yeah, I think that was so good. Like definitely balancing like, when does like your passion become a business? Like, I think that's such a, like a, like a tenuous point. Um, but I think the way that you described it was very good and like very, thank you. definitely something I'll take away. Thank um, you. I would love to hear more about like, how has your journey as like, whether it's like your music journey, whether it's ice skating or figure skating or like even your pageant work, like how has that helped shape your definition of failure? Failure. I don't believe in failure. Ooh, I've had okay. so many, I really don't believe in it. I think there's downs in people's life, lives, there's low points and there's growing. Like, I don't look at it as failure and low points. Like, oh, I'm not productive. I'm, I'm failing at life. No, like you're just like making a couple of mistakes and you're learning and you're growing. So for example, in skating, when I was younger, there was a period of a couple of years when, I mean, I would go to competitions and I would fall on every single skating element. Oh. And I was not bad. I was really good mm -hmm. in practice. I was very mm -hmm. much prepared or I could easily have won the entire competition. Yeah. But it was almost like I failed myself and everyone around me that I'd put time effort into me to be able to skate. And like my coaches and stuff. And at the moment, I looked at that as failure. But now looking back, I'm like, the fact that I kept with it and persevered. Mm -hmm. And I learned from all those experiences, trial and error. What, what did, why did I do to fall that many times? Kind of helped me now in life with music. It's like, okay, so what if I met, make a mistake in front of someone singing? What if my voice cracks? It's not a failure. It's just, I'll just keep going. It's life. Like who cares at this point? So my view on failure is there's no failure. It's you're stepping outside your comfort zone and you may fall a couple of times, but maybe on the 10th time of falling, you'll stand up on the 11th. Oh my goodness. I, I love, I love, 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 love. I feel like that's so um, cliche though, you know? It's true. And like the way you describe it too, like you can clearly see you believe in it too. And like you subscribe to that, like it get down 10 times, get up 11. Like it's true. Like if you continue to brush yourself up you're confident in yourself any failure is just seen as like an next opportunity it's like getting closer to that one that that goal it's 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 getting there it's not about yeah. being not it's not about being a sign like people are like oh it's a sign no it's not a sign it's not a sign it's that you're not good at something so for example yeah. I um I earlier last semester so my first semester in college I did really bad on my economics test and econ was something I did in high school I went through every single class my school offered. And I went to a university to take a class there in economics. That's my major because yeah. I loved it so much. But when I went to university, I was like, why is it so much more difficult? Why is it, why am I literally failing at something I love so much and I was good at in the past, you know? Mm -hmm. And that made me have motivation to keep going. Like, okay, I'm not going to let one test define me. I'm going to study a lot and I'm kind of going to like literally live and breathe and obsess over until I get my hundred percent or a on the next test, you know? And so I was sad, you know, I was kind of down. I was like, am I dumb? You know, but I was like, wait a second. Like, this is just one silly test. It's, it's just, I'm learning. I'm adapting is what it is. I love I'm that. I think that like, that is that's, awesome. yeah, that's literally incredible. I need that like on my wall somewhere, but like always yes. take that back and being like, Hey, is this like me being incompetent or is this like, just like a small hiccup in my journey? And I think that's such an important yes. reflection. No, yeah. Like there's, oh my goodness. It's so yeah. easy to say that like, Oh, this is me as an accomplishment. like you less than a person. You're not worthy enough, which is so, so misguided and like that's not it like we are all such strong incredible dynamic like powerful women 
we're going to change the world. And to think that like some ridiculous test is like some sort of value metric of how amazing or how good you are as a person is so misguided. Like the tests are- like, I did people. fail for a second. Like it's normal yeah. to feel like fail. Yeah. It's, it's normal, normal to feel like, you know, and I told myself like, wait, this is not a failure. This is either not for me or I'm just going to keep working at it until I can conquer it type of thing. Yeah. I'm still working at it, but I'm not going to keep up. <laughs> no, I'm better. I'm good now. I'm good now. It was just that one time, but still like. No, for sure. As we begin to wrap up the podcast, we just want to ask you a few last questions. Um, one of those being, what is something that you are grateful for today? I'm grateful for not to have knee surgery. A month ago, I hurt my, I, I didn't hurt my knee, but a year and a half ago, I had knee surgery on it. And a month ago, it started hurting really bad again. I kid you not, I was telling everyone I'm having knee surgery. I know it like it is broken again. Okay, something's wrong. I went to the doctors today and they were like, you're all good. You just got to do some leg exercises. So I am grateful I don't have to have knee surgery again. <laughs> that is something for sure. Um, and something else we love to ask our podcast guests is what is something that you loved about yourself today? And I smiled a lot today. Is that a good answer? That's <laughs> that I, that I had a smile on my face today. I love that. That's it. Your smile is infectious, by the way. Like absolutely Thank infectious. Thank yeah. you. And then our last question for today is if you could describe entrepreneurship or being an entrepreneur is in like three words, what would those three words be? Risk, rewards, like like your um, benefits after a while. And there's this word, it's on the tip of my tongue. So risk, rewards, excitement. I think those are good. That's a good way to sum up entrepreneurship. <laughs> but see, even music has entrepreneurship in it. It's taking oh. risks. It's exciting. Totally. And it has some rewards if you keep going with it. <laughs> oh my God, no, that is huge. Sorry, that I need to point out as well. Like there is this idea that entrepreneurship is this like MBA, I need to start a tech company. That's not it. Entrepreneurship is about being creative energy, taking a risk. Music Thank is you. one of the most entrepreneurial or artists are not probably the most Allie. entrepreneurial in the world. It's true. Ali, you are just like that too. You're, I remember I, wa I watched you this whole year and it's uh, truthfully amazing. I see if so, I have so many similarities with you in the sense that like you messaged me on oh, nice, right? you messaged me on NYU, my messenger on Facebook and Instagram, getting in touch like, hey, I would love to like Zoom and we can talk and chat and stuff with my, um, it was not a live tribe at the time. It was count oh, me. Oh, it was in. called count me in. Yeah, um, exactly. Yeah. And I do that with people on LinkedIn. Yes, it so funny. But I'll go with like music industry professionals. And like, I'm like, okay, I can't find their address to send my my, my DVD to. I might go with LinkedIn with them and get to know them that way. Oh my God. And then Waylon and I talk about this all the time. Like the student angles will just be like, hey, I'm a student. Like I want to learn. Like you have such an advantage being a student college entrepreneurship best like we've been talking about this with so many guests like it's your time to fail it's your time to royally fuck up and just try things it's your time to mm -hmm. learn more than any other time just reach out no one's Honestly, gonna care being a student is the best part in someone's life it it's really more, is. It's yeah. literally it is. the most safe thing too because oh my gosh i'm a student like i'm the when you, you have, go like, to like um to fuck you have like entrepreneurship diplomatic immunity yeah. When, yeah yeah and when I was at like the doctor's office earlier today I put um it said employment I put student I was like oh I'm chilling like a student everything yeah discounts oh, are the student. best thing I feel like being in college yeah. part-time I'm not I'm in full-time right now but like yeah. I feel like going part-time just to go to have student discounts for a long oh my goodness no, no. the student no. discounts no. unmatched oh so I love it when like you just email someone you're like I'm a freshman like in like whatever yes! like, they're like oh my goodness like you baby and then they like message you back yeah. because they just like feel bad oh, resources that day. yeah I just had that today that just literally happened today like someone messaged me well I mentioned someone I'm like hi I think you're really cool I want to talk to you I'm a freshman teach me <laughs> was it in like a class of yours that you needed some help in no this is like in the class of my life <laughs> <laughs> This is like this is just life. It's exciting. I Everything want to come to um um Hong Kong and you're in Hong Kong or Shanghai right now. I 
in Shanghai now, but I'm from Hong Kong. Like, that's where my family Princeton is. Princeton is where I again in the U.S. I New Jersey. New yeah. Jersey. Am I dumb? Mm-hmm. What? No. New Jersey. Mm-hmm. I thought it was in like Pennsylvania for some reason. That's you, Penn. We're Warner. really close. Yeah. Yeah. yeah um, we all, I want to come to um, Hong Kong, Shanghai, wherever, you know. Oh my God, yes. And yeah. visit. Yes, we will take you around. We will take Literally, you Literally, so I would love that. Maybe I should. Maybe Do I should. Absolutely. Get the school. No, and if I'm ever yeah. in New York, oh, I'll come with you too. Across. Oh my God, let's you know. do it. I love that. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for being on the podcast. We loved having you here. Where can our audience find you? Okay, so I post a lot about my music and when things are coming out on my Instagram at Anissa Shake, oh, which is A N E E S A S H E I K H official. <laughs> and official. you can find me on Spotify just at Anissa, my first name, and YouTube, Anissa Vivo, or just Anissa. I have two channels, one for music and one like behind the scenes channel. And then um, Apple Music, of course. And then my website, Anissa Official. I hope you guys all got that. <laughs> no, I don't know. We'll link everything below. Don't worry. Got Thanks, it. Thanks. Um, And then is there any song you want us to share? Any song that we should be listening to? Oh, my goodness. Okay, so I feel like the past year, no, no like since this past semester, like since the new year, January, I have um, also another thing to point out as students, we say since this in this past semester when it's like, yeah, like, past, yeah, it's like, it's like, the, new it's year. like the new year. Okay, since January. The I've year, been very, yeah, I've had like, like acoustic series of my songs that I plan on releasing the produced version of in like the next month or two. So check out my acoustic songs right now because in a month or two, the real versions and their music videos, which will be killer. I'm shooting them in Miami. Oh yeah, I love Miami. Awesome. I love Miami. Check those out so you have a sneak peek for the produced versions coming out soon. Oh, please do. I love that so much. Amazing. Thank Um, you so much. And we are so excited to hopefully have you back on the pod at some time. That wraps it up for today's podcast. Thank you so much for tuning in. We hope you learned a lot about Anissa and how you can transform your passion into a business. Big thanks to Waylon and Clara as our podcast producers too. Check out our past episodes and look out for our upcoming episodes featuring inspiring female entrepreneurs through Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you're listening to this podcast now. To stay updated and involved, join the Entrepreneurs Podcast community on our Instagram and LinkedIn and get in touch with us to share your very own entrepreneurial journey together.